a Sing Dev here. In today's video, I'm showing you how to convert JPEG and PNG files to WebP in your console. This video, you can follow it along on Windows, you can follow it along on Ubuntu. Um, it really shouldn't matter because the actual library that we're going to be using is available for both. It's available for Mac as well. Um, but obviously some of these commands I'm using, they're going to be for uh, Ubuntu because I'm going to be using WSL2 here on Windows. Um, so let's just jump straight into it. So I've got a couple of files that I'm going to be that I'm going to be showing you. So this is the JPEG file and this is the PNG file. They're both named the exact same thing. So we're going to open them up and you can see that they're just a blank square. Um, we're not really looking at trying to, you know, how, how to maintain the quality because we're going to be using the default settings. Um, we're not going to be tweaking that. That's something you can tweak after you learn how to do it in this video. So let's just jump straight into that. So you can see here that I've navigated to a temporary folder I've made for WebP. And the reason I've done that is because I'm, first of all, I want you to clone, uh, git clone from source. So if you don't have git already, then what you're going to need to do is you're just going to have to do this. So sudo apt install git. So you can see that it's not done that because I've already got it installed. So, so what you need to do is head to this URL, um, which is in the description below, and then you're going to copy this URL here, and then we're going to copy and paste that back into our terminal. So now we've got this on the terminal, we're just gonna paste that in, and we're going to git clone that. So what you're gonna see once that's downloaded is we're gonna list out the directory, and you can see here we've got libwebp, which is what we've just cloned. So let's go into that. And what we're going to do then is list that out as well. Actually, let's just clear this out first. Um, so the first thing that you may want to do here is actually print the readme file. So the way that you would do that is cat and then readme. And you can see here it's got all of this in here. Um, there's quite a lot for you to scroll through though. So the easy way to do it might be to actually check that out in the browser and you can do that uh, on another link that I've got for you. So you've got the exact same thing here. This is exactly what um, we just printed out in the console. Um, so you can actually just head to this in there and it's a little bit easier. And this has, you know, the installation instructions, um, a bunch of other information as well, the flags and things like that, which will be really useful as you start to use this more and more. But we don't need to do any of that right now. You just need to follow along what I'm doing in the tutorial. So the next thing um, that we need to do is basically we need to make sure that we have make installed. So if you don't know if you've got make installed, the way to do that is just make dash dash version. And you can see that I've got it installed there. But if you don't, then it's just simple sudo apt install make. And you can see that one there. And there's one more thing as well that you need to install and that is WebP. So you actually need to install that as well. So sudo apt install WebP. And you can see that that one's done as well. I've already got that, so that's great for me. Um, and then the next thing is basically make this file. So we're gonna make it. So um, this may be new to you, but just follow along with what I do here. I just cleared that out. So what we're gonna do now is, is run that make file. So to run that make file, we just need to do make dash F and then make file unix and this is one of the ways to install it from git uh, it's probably one of the easier ways as well so you can see that it's installed it it's it's actually given a fatal error there but we're just going to check that this actually works so let me go back a folder we're going to clear this out and we're going to list the files so those are those two files i showed you earlier um, in the windows explorer now the way to check that these are actually working is to obviously just try and convert one of them. So the easiest way to do that is to take uh, either one of these files and we're going to run the command. So it's cwebp um, and that this is the command that you need if you're converting something to webp, which is why it's cwebp, it's convert to webp, or at least I'm assuming that that's what that means. Then we're going to specify the quality um, and this is if you want lossy compression. Um, which is generally the best idea if you want to get the maximum image file savings. So we're going to put Q-Q, dash Q, the flag, and then 75. That's actually the default. Now, if you had 100, um, then that's going to be a much higher quality image, but you're not going to have as much savings. If you went to like 50 or 25, obviously, you're going to have more savings, uh, but the quality is going to be more negatively affected. So that's what the first thing that we do. 
Once we've done that, we specify the image name. And obviously you need to specify a path as well, but because we're in the folder, um, we don't need to specify a particular path. Now, once we've done that, we then do dash O, and this is gonna be the file name. This flag is the file name that we're gonna convert this to. So I'm just gonna say one.webp and hit enter, and you can see that it's actually, it's actually done that fine. So that error that we had before, um, it shouldn't be an issue. Quite often you will get errors like this, but let's just check that the file actually works as well. So let's just come over here and I'm gonna hit F5 quickly. You can see the folder that we've obviously um, installed. And then this is the actual WebP file, which is, you know, opens up in the browser because it's a, it's a web file. So you can see there that that's the exact same image. Uh, there's not too much pixelation or anything, but you wouldn't be able to really tell um, with just a square like this anyway. So you can see that that works, which is good. Now, coming back to uh, this one here, obviously um, we've done JPEG. To do the PNG, you'll do the same thing. The main difference is you're obviously gonna want to not name it the same as, as we've done with this one. It's not gonna be one.webp because it will just overwrite that file. Um, so bear in mind that you know one.jpg and one.png is fine for a file name because they're different file extensions. Uh, but you cannot have those both converted like to like, uh, like for like for WebP. So we've done all of that, and that's basically the main thing you need to know for lossy compression. So what if we wanted to do some lossless compression? A lossless compression, if you don't know, it basically maintains the image. Uh, lossy compression, it basically changes that image and it is a different image even if it looks pretty much identical. Whereas with lossless, it is technically the same image so you're not getting a lot of file savings. So the way to do this instead would be CWebP and then the flag is gonna be lossless and then we're gonna do the same thing again. So we're gonna do one.png this time instead of JPEG and we're gonna specify the file name. We're gonna say uh, one png.webp and that should work as well. So We've done that and now we're going to check that file as well so hit f5 again you can see that that's created that file and that's there as well so that's exactly you know exactly worked as intended so that's really good so the last thing you might want to do here after you've installed all of this and you've obviously checked that it's working you've you know maybe wrote down or memorized a couple of these commands after trying them a few times is you're going to want to maybe do some cleanup so um, let's just clear this out and list this out as well. And what I'm going to say is, I'm going to say sudo remove dash r and then libwebp. List again, you can see that folder's gone and you're not going to have any problems here. So let's just say, um, say we want to do this again and let's just change this file name this time to two. And you can see that still works. So you don't need that folder that we that we cloned at the beginning of the video. You don't need to keep that anymore. You should be able to run these commands from anywhere on your system now. So that's it for this video. Um, you can see that it all works pretty easily. If you have any problems with it, let me know in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.